What's up guys, my name is Jake and welcome to Abandoned, episode 67. Just around 30 years ago, the Poconos were the epicenter for getting away in absolute luxury, escaping into the mountains and the picturesque scenery. The area has a rich history dating back to the early 1800s, and after World War II, the various resorts that began to spring up became known as the honeymoon capital of the world. However, the area began to decline in the 90s and early 2000s, seeing the closure of many famous institutions. Perhaps one of the most iconic out of all of them was the Penn Hills Resort, a hotel with such a vibrant history and one that many people enjoyed over the many decades it was open. Now though, it's been sitting abandoned and in disrepair for over a decade, and the future looks rather bleak. So today, join me as we look into what happened to Penn Hills, and really why the Poconos Resorts as a whole failed so spectacularly. This episode of Abandoned is sponsored by HelloFresh. Go to HelloFresh.com slash BSF14 and use my code BSF14 for up to 14 free meals and 3 free gifts. As World War II came to a close, two Italian immigrants, Francis and Charles Palillo, had opened a tavern in 1944. Over the next couple of years, this grew into a lodging motel with over 100 rooms across 500 acres of land. Though barely any of this land was being utilized, and by the mid-1950s, the hotel appreciated moderate success. However, this wasn't without any roadblocks, as soon after they opened, Francis's brother Charles had passed away. Francis and his son ultimately began to rebuild after a flood had ravaged the lodge, and really at this point, all this property stood as was a measly roadside hotel. This, however, changed as improvements were made to the hotel, including a brand new pool, new lodging structures, and a main event building of sorts that housed common areas, and a beautiful new restaurant overlooking the pond and the nearby Broadhead Creek. Across that creek was now a brand new nine-hole golf course for their guests to enjoy. The hotel was now named Penn Hills Resort, and by the 1970s, things began to change even more. The Poconos as a whole was evolving into the premier destination for vacationers from New York City and families looking to get away into the mountains. But really what took off was its unique appeal to honeymooners. The Cove Haven Resort was the first to introduce the heart-shaped tub, a novelty that very much attracted couples and had spread across marketing for the area. There was an enormous spread in Life magazine, and really it just took off from there. Soon, other resorts followed suits and more destinations opened their doors, like a brand new NASCAR track in 1971. Penn Hills decided to capitalize on this trend, and fast. The resort saw new construction of a modern, sleek, multi-story lodging building called the Riviera that surrounded the pool. The small cottages from the 1950s were either torn down completely or heavily modified to now create these very modern wooden villas dubbed the penthouses. They were multi-level lodging suites with incredible theming. In fact, many of the rooms at Penn Hills had embraced the lover's theme, with many of them featuring private hot tubs and heart-shaped jacuzzis. Surrounded by themed carpets, mirrors, and fake foliage, the rooms also featured circular beds, sometimes surrounded by pillars. It's quite possibly the most 70s room I have ever seen. Really though, it must have been pretty cool back then to stay inside a multi-level room, with an enormous window and a private jacuzzi, all steps away from the main pool. At the time at least, that was peak luxury. By the 1980s, Penn Hills was a massive hit, and one of the most famous Poconos resorts operating. By now, the property had grown much further than I think any of the original family owners had ever conceived. Penn Hills now featured a nightclub, two restaurants, an indoor pool, tennis courts, a full spa, nightly performances in the theater, and an indoor ice skating rink at the Isorama, which at the time was the first indoor ice skating rink in the area. Really though, that was just the highlights, as Penn Hills truly was a resort filled with seemingly everything in a rather small package. Despite the 500 acres, the core of the resort and its structures were concentrated around the creek and divided almost in half by Highway 191. But that didn't detract away from the nature it offered, as across the sprawling acreage, you can visit the creek and canoe down it, hike through the vast forest, and find waterfall treasures. The multiple daily activities 
activities they offered ensured there were certainly plenty to do. The upper cabins, called the Mountain Villas, were secluded amongst the trees, giving an isolated feeling, yet still in the middle of all the fun. Penn Hills was also truly a four-season resort, as the winter months were fully embraced, offering skiing trips and cozy winter night packages. You could even rent a snowmobile to get around the resort ground. Elsewhere on that 500 acres, also owned by the family, was the Penn Hill Estates, luxury vacation home rentals, and Alpine Mountain, where guests could go skiing during the winter months. By the early 90s, Penn Hills Resort had thoroughly enjoyed its success over the last three decades. But now, things were about to change. As the mid-90s came in, there was a rather dramatic shift in the Poconos. Air travel was becoming more and more accessible, along with cheaper prices. Destinations across the country, or even overseas, were becoming more exciting for couples looking to celebrate their honeymoon. Now, the only luxury vacation you could take for a honeymoon didn't need to be within driving distance, nor did it necessarily have to be a quiet escape. This paired with the now outdated decor and steadily high prices spelled bad news for the Poconos as tourism sharply declined. Resorts elsewhere in the Poconos had already closed down, some even becoming abandoned. Penn Hills, however, continued on. With less and less occupancy, the high cost to maintain the property began to outweigh the income, and in many instances, the hotel was losing money. By the early 2000s, the vast land was eventually split off and presumably sold. This brought the once 500-acre property down to just 60 acres for the Penn Hills Resort. In 2003, prices still began at around $250 a night for the penthouses and as low as $185 for the Riviera hotel rooms. Adjusted for inflation, however, those rates were as high as $300 a night, which really wasn't cheap. These prices dropped as years went on, but for good reason. It really was the only way to attract new guests to stay there. By 2007, rates were as low as $99 a night. If that wasn't a sign of the massive decline at Penn Hills, then the photos from this unique era of the resort's history might be the ultimate testament to that. The guest rooms look incredibly outdated even for 2007. The finishes, materials, and furniture all look extremely tired and honestly so depressing. Elsewhere around the resort was a similar story, with tired-looking buildings clearly from an era that was much better than the one it was currently in. It didn't help that a brand new Great Wolf Lodge had opened in 2005, bringing new family-friendly entertainment with modern amenities to the area. Penn Hills Resort now had serious competition and was perceived now as nothing more than a roadside stop or looked upon by those who had rose-colored glasses from the past. Its position in the romantic vacationers market was clearly set more towards older couples, and really with a property this large, that small cut of a dying market just wasn't sustainable. After struggling for years, its owner, Francis Pelillo, had passed away at the age of 102. It was discovered at the time of her death that the resort owed more than a million dollars in taxes, and the property was seized by the county. In a short time, the resort fell into major disrepair and was ultimately closed permanently. The news came as a shock to the employees who found out the day of, and were never paid thereafter. Really though, the disrespect to the employees got even worse. By 2013, the son of the late owner, Charles A. Palillo Jr., was sentenced to three years of probation by the Department of Justice for falsifying and concealing financial documents pertaining to Penn Hills and taking money out of the resort's pension fund, around a million dollars worth. He was ordered to pay $2 million in restitution to the former employees. However, he too died a year after his conviction. Around the same time, nature was beginning to take its toll on the buildings. After just a year of being closed, the resort fell into a unique state of how it looked just after it shuttered, yet also slowly decaying. Even after around three years, the property still remained rather untouched. The plants within the indoor pool turned brown, and the water itself appeared grey. Moss crept through the doorways onto the carpet, and only slight natural decay took its toll on the Riviera balconies. The following years, however, were a different story, and vandals began finding their way in by 2015. It was then where things began to go downhill. By now, any hope of reopening was crushed, and the resort 
was abandoned. In just a short time, all of the structures had been broken into and absolutely ransacked. Graffiti covered many of the walls, and scrappers ripped out most of the valuables left behind. With walls smashed open and glass shattered, the level of decay quickly accelerated after the resort had sustained multiple winters and extensive water damage. Now mold and foliage covered the distinctly 70s carpets and covered the soft texture of the nightclub's bar. Really, the entire resort was in an unbelievable state, including the iconic suites and the romantic bedrooms with the heart-shaped jacuzzis. Once a symbol of the Poconos, now a stark reality of what it had become. As more time passed, Penn Hills only became worse. Floors began to collapse in on themselves, debris was thrown onto the glass awning of the Riviera Bar, and most of the hotel rooms had been completely destroyed. Around 2016, and then again in 2017, the property was sold to a third party that seemed to have little ambition for the land. Meanwhile, some small buildings near the tennis courts were set fire to. But really, the only change was the demolition of the main entrance structure on the pool side of the road, after it too had gone up in flames. Fire would become a reoccurring issue, as in early 2020, a section of the penthouses were set on fire and then demolished. It wasn't long until another fire completely destroyed the former sports building adjacent to the tennis courts. This finally got the county and the current landowners to do something on the land, and this culminated in 2021 with painting over the sign and demolishing the penthouses block of villas. Today, Penn Hills Resort stands as a decayed, vandalized, fragmented, and destroyed version of the resort for lovers. While the first phase of demolition has been completed, portions of the hotel still remain, and according to city officials, this project to completely remove the buildings is a long-term objective. They hope for a new hotel development to take the place of the old Penn Hills site. But I think that's rather wishful thinking, because really, the Poconos just isn't as desirable of a vacation spot as it once was. Outside of some successful cases, the lack of large population centers, or even the lack of interest in general, is a tough hurdle to get over, and while some people may prefer the nature setting of a vacation, I don't think it's enough for another Penn Hills style resort. Nor do I even think the Poconos is really even the best place to get that setting. Really though, that kind of sums up why it failed in the first place. With such a loss of interest of vacationers, their primary market being honeymooners had put them in a suddenly small niche. Along with ballooning maintenance expenses, back taxes, and outdated rooms and facilities, there really was no way it was going to last. Tack on a global recession, and failure was almost a certainty. Post-closure, though, it really isn't that shocking as to why these buildings went downhill so quickly. After all, there is a rather busy road running right down the middle of the hotel, and the fences to keep people out were laughably unsecure, even all the way up to 2021. So it makes sense as to why this resort was so vandalized and highly trafficked by curious people. Even I made a trip to see Penn Hills in 2019, and I spent a really short time walking around. I figured it was so heavily damaged that I wouldn't even bother making a video there. But the atmosphere around it was so surreal. Seeing these massive lodging buildings emerge from the thick foliage below, and seeing the beautifully campy sign, just makes me wish I could have seen it in its heyday. But even with my short time walking around there, I probably watched four or five cars stop on the side of the road and about 15 people come in and out of the property. I'm not kidding, this was a very active site. If anything, more people are visiting it now than they did in the later years of it being open. In the end, I guess this style of resort though, was never meant to last forever, and it faded away with many others in the Poconos and Catskills. However, there is one resort that somehow lasted up till now, and that's the Cove Haven Resort. The very same one that first introduced the heart-shaped jacuzzi. Don't ask me who on earth stays here still, and why they're paying upwards of $300 a night, but it is a hotel that's literally exactly as it was in the 80s, and even has a two-story champagne glass hot tub suite, which is just perfect. As for Penn Hills though, it looks like its time may finally be over. It certainly had a memorable run while being open, and ultimately became, and currently is, a symbol for the fall of something that was so iconic for the area. But now, I think it's safe to say that the love is finally dead, 
at Penhouse. Yo, Jake, it's arrived, man. Seriously, put your lighting panel in here for dramatic effect, man. Sorry. Well, I don't know if you could tell, but we're pretty excited about today's sponsor, HelloFresh. We got a box of three delicious recipes for quite possibly the most incompetent chefs. Or at least one more than others. We decided to make the beefy skillet pasta, but there are other great choices like turkey ragu gnocchi and caramelized onion Swiss burgers. With the holidays approaching, spending less time on cooking meals and more time with the family is very important. For me, I'm just lazy and I don't want to go through the whole ordeal of cooking a big dinner, so HelloFresh makes it unbelievably easy with cutting back on meal prep and cleanup. They offer a wide variety of quick and easy recipes, including some taking just 20 minutes to prepare. And then you just up and down with the wrist. You Stop like, dropping them! It's an accident! <laughs> If you're looking to eat better, options like veggie, family-friendly, pescatarian, and calorie-smart are perfect and tasty. It smells like Nana's Garden, though, with the Italian seasoning. Perhaps the best part about HelloFresh is the fact that, on average, they're 30% cheaper than buying stuff at grocery stores. Plus, with their pre-portioned ingredients in each box, there's no chance of wasting food, and pretty much all of the packaging is made from recycled content. <laughs> Look at that! Bellissimo! Fantastic! Despite us being idiots, our final product was easy to make, and even more important to me, easy to clean up. Time to dine in. Oh, you really don't like the hat, No, I'm eh? very much sick of that, actually. Well, this chef. looks delicious. Uh, good job, Brennan. Well... Kind of. We're not exactly the best chefs. Well, I mean, Jake, if a beginner chef like me and the you could do it, then I think anyone can really make these. Right, don't degrade me like that, but... <laughs> don't lump you in this. two complete idiots can put this together, I say that was a job well done. If you use the link in the description below and use my code BSF14, you can get up to 14 free meals and 3 free gifts. I absolutely loved what we made, and I'm very excited to cook the rest of the meals. Anyway guys, my name is Jake, and thank you very much for watching.